back to another video. Today's video is Fabric 101, where we're going to be talking about some basics of fabric. I'm going to share some fabric knowledge with you all, and this is just like an easy to find sort of like very basic introductory guide and then you can go off and do your own research and kind of like delve deeper into it if that's something you wanted to know. If you're new here, hi I'm Olga and I make sewing content that is usually vintage inspired and sometimes a little bit nerdy. First I'm gonna cover like fabric names and kind of what that means because I think a lot of information can be gleaned from that. You may have noticed that usually fabrics are named with two or more names so the most simplistic names will be like two names, something like a cotton sateen, a silk chiffon, a, a cotton velvet, viscose chalet, a silk dupioni. That may not mean anything to you right now. They actually contain a lot of information. Usually these two words refer to the fiber type and the weave type. So for example, with cotton sateen, Cotton is the fiber type and sateen is your weave type. So right now, those words might not mean that much to you, but as you get to know what fibers are and which fibers are available, you'll start to spot that in the fabric names. And that gives you some information. Like for example, different fiber types will have different properties. Like for example, wool tends to be warm, tends to be uh, hypoallergenic. Usually wool fabrics are a bit more on the thicker side. Not always, but usually, whereas cottons tend to be a bit thinner. Not necessarily, like you do have thicker cottons. We'll get into that later. And then you also have the weave types, which are, for example, a sateen, a dupioni, a broadcloth. And that gives you information on how the actual threads of the fabric are woven together. For example, with velvet, everybody knows what velvet is. You have the like kind of fuzziness at the top and then it's plain at the bottom, but you actually have lots of different types of fiber based velvets. So you can have cotton velvet, you can have silk velvet, poly velvet, there's blends and it's the same fabric, but obviously it being made from cotton or uh, polyester will then add extra different properties to the fabric that is very, very similar. Mostly you do have this kind of naming thing where you have the fiber type and then the weave, but then you can also have other descriptors like suiting or coating that are not referring to the weave type or the type of fiber. And they're actually referring to the weight or the use or purpose of the fabric. So if I tell you that I have a wool coating, you can assume that this fabric is going to be thick and heavy, and it's not going to be suitable for, for example, making a blouse. However, if I have a wool suiting, you might be able to make a jacket out of it, but maybe a coat is not going to be a very warm coat. A coat made from wool coating will be a lot warmer than a coat made from wool suiting. But with suiting, you have you can have wool suiting, you can have linen suiting, you can have cotton, you can have poly, you can have viscose. You have lots of different kinds of suiting fabric, but with suiting, you know that it's a more structured, you know that it's woven, you know that it's going to be something that you can make a dress or a skirt or a jacket or blazer or suit out of, right? There are also other descriptions that actually refer to treatments that you can give or due to the fabric while you're in production. Things like yarn dye. Actually, yarn dye is not something in production that refers to the threads, but yarn dye just means that the threads of the fabric are dyed and not the actual fabric itself. So the fabric is not dyed after it's been made up and like woven. The threads themselves are colored threads. So like in a gingham, usually ginghams are yarn dyed, whereas like a printed cotton, that means that it's just white fabric and then they print the design or the color on top. So things like dyed, uh, embroidered, brushed, these things then refer to treatments that you do to the fabric. So for example, brushed cotton flannel is a flannel is the weave type, a cotton is the fiber, and um, the brushed is just referring to feel of the fabric, which comes from a process that they put the fabric through to make it like super soft. Whereas like usual regular cotton flannel, it is soft, but it's not as soft as brushed cotton flannel. What I'm trying to say is there are different descriptors that will come in a, a the name of a fabric. They sometimes mean a weave. Usually the weave is at the end, and then you have the fiber, and that's usually like what material it's made out of and then you have other descriptors that might be like suiting for, or for example a printed poly cotton poplin. Poplin is a kind of weave 
a poly cotton is a blend of polyester and cotton so different fibers and then printed just means that the design that you see on the fabric was printed onto it after it was already a length of cloth. If you're confused about a fabric, break it down into different words, see which ones you know, which ones you don't. And usually Google is pretty good at explaining what different fabrics are and you can just like see what properties that fabric has and that will help you decide whether or not it's a good option for your garment that you're making. Within the fibers and within the weaves there are lots of different other things. So let's talk about fibers now. As I said before the fiber is what the threads and the yarns of the fabric are actually made out of. They can be made up from lots of different materials or blends of materials. Different fibers have different properties and these properties are then passed on to the fabric. This might be like debatable, I guess, but in my opinion, there are three different kinds of fibers. We have natural fibers, we have synthetic fibers, and then we have what I like to call man-made natural fibers. Natural fibers, like the name indicates, are naturally occurring and they include things like cotton, linen, silk, wool, bamboo, hemp, and these are all made from naturally occurring plants, animals, or minerals, and they're usually biodegradable. I haven't listed here every single natural fiber there is. You can go and Google that if you want to, but these are just examples and like the most common ones. On the other side of the spectrum, we have the synthetic fibers. These are man-made through chemical synthesis. They include things like acrylic, nylon, spandex, polyester, obviously, and they're usually made from some sort of plastic, therefore are not biodegradable. They they do tend to be very durable though because of that and um, some people argue that they're easier to care for. Then halfway through, in my opinion, we have what I like to call man-made natural fibers. These are things like viscose, rayon, lyocell, and acetate. These are fibers that are created through a chemical reaction, but they're actually made from natural byproducts like wood pulp. Some people consider these to be uh, natural fibers because uh, they're made from cellulose and therefore, you know, are natural. And then other people consider them to be synthetics because you need a chemical reaction to produce them. So therefore there are, they are man-made, therefore they are synthetic. I think that they are both, they're like somewhere in between and we can have a different category. It's fine. They don't have to fit in one box or the other. Let's talk about weave types. I'm going to move on over to this side just for a little bit of a change in scenery. The weave refers to how the threads are woven together to create the cloth and obviously just like with fibers different kinds of weaves give different properties to your fabrics the weave is how the weft and the warp are interlaced the weft and the warp are the kind of like directions in which your yarns are going the warp is the vertical and the weft is the horizontal and it, it really doesn't seem like it because you'd think like oh how many different ways are there to weave you know, fabric together or yarns together. There are a lot. It's really surprising, but it does really change the properties of your fabric. I'm only going to like kind of explain the three basic ones and then you can go and research more if you want. So the three basic weaves are plain weave, twill, and uh, satin weave. Plain, like the name suggests, is the most basic kind of weave and it is where your weft alternates over and under the warp over under over under pattern and that goes in both directions like over under over under both ways it makes strong and durable fabric for twill weave it'll be like three over three under or two over two under kind of thing this is for example denim and this actually creates a diagonal pattern and makes for really dense and thick fabric that's very hard wearing and then satin weave is a pattern that can be anything from four to one to six ten twelve um i even saw examples of like 16 to one and this is where it goes, you go over th 16 threads and then under one, and then over 16 threads and then under one, or over four threads and under one. As you can imagine, this makes for a not very durable fabric because it's very prone to snagging. However, it does produce fabric that is very shiny, that's very glossy, 
that is really smooth and that um, has a dull kind of back. Yeah, and, and satin weave is obviously very much associated with luxury and kind of fancy clothes. The other two things that I really wanted to touch up on this video are to talk about grain lines because this is something that I did not understand until I, I'm embarrassed to admit how late into my sewing journey. I used to think that when you get a magazine or a pattern cutting uh, layout, I used to think that they were so wasteful like why are you wasting so much fabric you can just cut it on like this and you can just fit this bit in here and you can just shift this this way and then I would make the pieces like that and then I would get really weird clothes obviously and I didn't understand how much cutting things on the right grain line impacted my final garment and the wear and kind of like the finished result not only that but it also impacts the the sewing experience so the grain line remember when I told you about the weft and the warp the warp is your grain line the line that is running vertically through your fabric from top to bottom you imagine that you know my little notes here let's say that this is a piece of fabric and these are your selvages so the sides are your selvages that's the like little bit at the end where you might have a little bit of a bit thicker and kind of looks like it was pressed together sometimes so that's their selvage and your grain line is basically the line that goes vertically and it's parallel to your selvage so your your grain line is always parallel to your selvages then you have your cross grain your cross grain is a horizontal line so your cross grain is the weft it's the line that goes from one side of the selvage to the other and this can also be a straight like a straight grain it depends on the fabric it depends on the weave for a plain weave fabric it doesn't make a difference because it will be all the same but for a twill it makes a difference because there's a diagonal pattern so it's not going to be the same and then you have your bias which is the 45 degree angle and usually the 45 degree angle of fabric is quite stretchy because from the way it's woven usually when a pattern is made and it's designed there are things in mind like this piece is going to be cut on the bias this piece is going to be cut on the straight grain so for example with this dress this was on the bias and maybe in this dress particularly they don't need that but in some fabrics and in some patterns you need that bit to be cut on the bias because the pattern is counting all that stretchiness to then be able to sew those pieces together or to have like the fits that they want to have at the end so if you are not familiar with the grain line and you notice that your garments tend to not look like what they look like in the pictures this might be one of the issues other things that might happen is when you cut a big skirt if you let it drop overnight some bits will stay the same and some bits dropped and that means that the bits that are cut on the bias will have dropped because it's stretched overnight and it's important to understand fabric in order to work with it grain line is a really important thing it's very simple really once you figure it out all patterns made for woven fabrics have this where they'll have a little arrow pointing you know and it'll say grain line sometimes not always but sometimes they do say grain line and that line needs to be parallel with your selvages that's all you need to know really if they want a pattern that's cut on the bias basically what happens is let's say that they want this piece cut on the bias the arrow will go like this so you have to twist the piece in order for the arrow to be parallel with the selvages so you're it's easy that's kind of what the grain line is it's really important to understand but it's actually very simple once you get it it'll really help the sewing process it will really help the finished result and usually it helps with the durability of your garments the last thing I want to touch on is fabric weight so you may have heard me talk about fabric weight earlier on when I was talking about like coatings and suitings and these are things that refer to the weight of the fabric the weight of a fabric is kind of the difference between you know a light breezy t-shirt and a heavy sweatshirt both of these are knit fabrics which I haven't talked about in this video but you can have lots of different fabrics made from cotton or made from wool or made from silk or made from linen or made from polyester and they will all be different and they will all have different properties because yes they are different weaves sure but it also might be the thickness of the yarns so when we're talking about the weight of fabrics we're talking about kind of the thickness of the yarns in addition to the the weave and the fiber there are very lightweight wools 
but you can never have a wool that is so lightweight that you can make a chiffon out of it, for example. Whereas you can get that with silk because silk is already a lot thinner, but you, it's very hard to get a silk coating, for example, with your polyesters and your acrylics and your uh, kind of man-made fibers, you can have a big, much bigger range because obviously you can make the fiber as big as you want it to be. Sometimes you actually get the weight of the fabric, like you might get a 290 GSM. That means like that's a thicker than an 80 GSM. So you do have weights in a, like sometimes with a numerical value where you can very clearly understand this one's bigger than this one. So this one's gonna be heavier than this one. A lot of times fabric websites will give you like, this is a lightweight fabric, this is a medium weight fabric. But even in inside medium weight fabrics, there is a range. But also fabric weight is something that you really learn through experience and through working with fabrics and feeling them and testing them out for different things. Kind of like pay attention to the fabrics around you in your life. But yeah, let me know if you want me to go more in depth or to do like little informative videos about other topics. Let me know if you still have any questions about fabrics. Yeah, I think that's it for today. So yeah, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave it a like and a comment and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't done that already. It would mean so much to me. You can also consider following me on Instagram or TikTok. I post on there pretty much every day. That's it for me for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!